Today, we're diving into one of the most controversial and talked about developments in global criminal justice, El Salvador's new mega prison, the Centro de Confinamiento del Terrorismo, or SECOT. Heart of El Salvador. Telemundo cameras are given rare access to Latin America's largest prison. Inside this mega prison, you'll find some of El Salvador's most dangerous gang members packed into massive cells, towers of bunk beds, and what looks like bird cages. This facility, which opened in 2023, has been at the center of both praise and criticism. It's a symbol of El Salvador's intense war on gangs, but it also raises serious questions about human rights and the future of the country. Be one of the most dangerous neighborhoods in the most dangerous city in one of the most dangerous countries in the world, El Salvador. El Salvador has been known as the murder capital of the world. Just to get an idea, in 2015, the murder rate in El Salvador was higher than any country on earth and more than 20 times higher than the U.S. So, let's take a closer look at what this prison is, why it was built, and what it means for El Salvador and the world. To understand why El Salvador felt the need to build such a massive prison, we need to go back to the roots of the issue, gang violence. For years, El Salvador has been one of the most dangerous countries in the world, with murder rates driven by notorious gangs like MS-13 and Barrio 18. These gangs have terrorized communities, extorted businesses, and controlled vast areas of the country. Stabbings, MS-13 has left a trail of victims throughout greater Boston. Living in our neighborhoods here in Southern California. And now these gangs are exporting death directly into America. Terrorizing the city of Greeley. Active in 46 states. Mata, viola, controla. Kill, rape, control. In 2019, President Nayib Bukele came to power with a promise to crack down on these gangs and restore safety to El Salvador. What pasaba antes acá? Acá y en la mayoría de comunidades de nuestro país ya no pasa más. Sino de que ahora tenemos la tranquilidad de que nuestros niños van a estar bien, de que nuestros jóvenes van a estar bien. His administration's approach, known as the Territorial Control Plan, has been one of the most aggressive anti-gang campaigns in the world, leading to mass arrests and a significant increase in the prison population. To accommodate the influx of prisoners, the government embarked on a monumental project, the construction of SICOT. Located in a remote area of Tecoluca, about 74 kilometers southeast of the capital, San Salvador, this prison was designed to hold an astonishing 40,000 inmates, making it the largest in the world. The biggest and most up-to-date prison in all of the Americas that is capable of holding over 40 thousand inmates and it is home to some of the most dangerous people in all of the world. There are eight different buildings that are designated to the prisoners. The size of the buildings are the size of a football field. Absolutely ginormous. And if you were to try to escape Sekha, it literally would be impossible. Not only are there two walls you'd have to hop over and one of those walls is 27 feet high with an additional nine feet of electrical fencing that is at 15 volts. Construction began in mid-2022 with the government sparing no expense to create what they describe as the most secure prison on the planet. The facility is equipped with cutting-edge technology, including facial recognition systems, high walls with electrified fences, and an army of guards. But what really stands out are the living conditions inside, which are designed to be as harsh as possible. Life inside Sekot is far from comfortable. Inmates are kept under strict control, with little to no contact with the outside world. Cells are overcrowded, with basic amenities deliberately kept to a minimum. The prison operates under a no-mercy policy, where the aim is to break the spirit of the inmates and deter others from joining gangs. Critics have compared the conditions to those of a maximum security prison designed for the most dangerous criminals. But in Seacott, thousands of inmates, many of whom have not been convicted of any crime, are subjected to this environment. While the government touts the prison as a success in their fight against gangs, not everyone is convinced. Human rights organizations have raised alarm bells, arguing that the conditions in Seacott 
may violate international human rights standards. The mass incarceration approach, they say, is not only inhumane, but also ineffective in the long term. Once inside, people don't have access to lawyers or communication with family. In short, the Salvadoran government can arrest whoever they want and charge them with crimes that are punished to up to 40 years in prison without ever being able to exercise a defense. According to the government, nearly 70,000 people have been arrested in the last year. Reports from inside the prison describe overcrowding, a lack of basic medical care, and psychological abuse. There are also concerns about due process, with many inmates having been arrested in sweeps with little evidence or trial. We did find one person who was willing to talk to us, but he asked that he remain anonymous. He says police accused him of being in a gang. And like Carlos, he was told he'd be released in 15 days if he were innocent. Despite these concerns, the Bukele administration claims that their strategy is working. Crime rates, particularly homicides, have reportedly dropped significantly since the crackdown began. But the question remains, at what cost? The mass incarceration of tens of thousands of people, many of whom are young men from impoverished backgrounds, could have long-term social consequences. Higher percentage of its population than any country in the world. 75,000 people and counting. Yo lo que creo que era exceso era la cantidad de muertos. Para mí era un exceso la cantidad de niñas violadas en El Salvador todos los días. Para mí era un exceso todos los negocios que tenían que pagar extorsión. Para mí esos eran los excesos. The prison has become a symbol of El Salvador's broader struggle, a struggle between security and human rights, between short-term victories and long-term stability. The impact of this prison and the policies it represents will be felt in El Salvador for years to come. So, what do you think? Is El Salvador's mega prison a necessary evil in the fight against gangs? Or is it a dangerous step towards authoritarianism? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. If you found this video informative, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.